In this video, we're going to take a look at a basic electronic machine, which is probably going to be the standard of machine, which is the very first one you ever use. So it doesn't have very many stitches. It's very, very simple to use. But before we take a look around the machine, let me explain the difference between hand sewing, which you may have done from previous videos that I've made, to machine sewing. So with hand sewing, you'll have threaded your needle and your needle goes into the fabric and out and in and out and that creates a stitch. With the sewing machine, you have two threads. So there's one at the top that goes through the needle and then there's one at the bottom. So when the top needle goes down, it loops the thread around the bottom and pulls it up. So you get a stitch that's formed in the center of your fabric and it should look the same from the top as it does from the bottom. Now, one other thing I'm going to mention before we have a look around the machine is the tension because the way that you thread the machine, the thread goes through lots of different channels, but it also goes through two little pieces that look like two plates. And when those plates are squished together, it restricts the speed at which the thread is pulled through. So if, the th if those tensions are open, if there's no tension on the machine, the thread from the top will just come pouring through the needle and you'll have a big knot of thread underneath your fabric. So tension is really important. I'll show you how to make sure the tensions are engaged when we thread. But let's have a look around the machine. Your machine may not look exactly the same as this one, but they all work pretty much in the same way. So at the side here, you'll have a plug where you plug in the mains lead and it may be in the same plug like this one is or another one where you have a foot pedal. So this is what's going to control the speed of the machine, just like in a car. So when you put your foot down on the pedal, then the machine will start to work. And the further down you put your foot on the pedal, the quicker the machine will sew. So let's just pop that on the floor. There's also an on-off switch, and up here is the hand wheel. When you start to sew, the hand wheel will start to turn anti-clockwise, it'll turn towards you. And there will be occasions when you turn this yourself. I'll show you that shortly. But in which case, you always turn this towards you as well. Now the way the machine is going to work is to have the thread from the top coming through all of these channels. We'll thread this up in just a second and then through the needle and the bottom thread goes inside here. Some machines will have the bobbin on the front. A lot of machines nowadays have them on the top. Underneath here you have what is called feed dogs or feed teeth and these are little spiky metal pieces that pull the fabric through the machine as you sew. So every time the needle goes down the teeth pull the fabric forward and that's what helps the fabric to move underneath the needle. This is called a presser foot and you can change these. A lot of machines, very simple machines, will come with one standard foot which is on the machine when you get it and then you'll have something called a zipper foot which we'll take a look at in another video. You may have buttonhole feet and different types of feet but again we'll cover those in future videos. Let's start with the stitches over here. Now I have a dial with a diagram of each one of the stitches. Again, yours may be different to mine. So have a look in the manual, the instruction manual that comes with your machine and that will explain what all the stitches are for. All we're going to look at today are the straight stitches and on my machine I have five different lengths of straight stitch. These are zigzag stitches, this is a buttonhole stitch, and then we've got some decorative stitches, but again we'll have a look at those in the future. So to choose the stitch, all I need to do is turn the dial. Now on some sewing machines you'll be able to alter the length of the stitch. You may have another dial on the top here, or you may have um, the ability to pull this dial out and choose a different selection of stitches. This is a very basic machine. Down here is a reverse button, so if I press this down and put my foot on the foot pedal, the machine will sew backwards. And the reason you, you'd need to do that is when you start sewing a seam, you sew a couple of stitches back and then forwards, and that helps to stop the thread and the stitches from coming undone. Up here is where we're going to wind the bobbin. This is where a spool of thread goes, and then we're simply going to follow all of the grooves all the way through and thread it in the machine. So that's going to be the first thing that we need to do. So your machine should come with some bobbins like this. 
always make sure you have the right bobbin for your machine. So if somebody else in your home has a different sewing machine and it's a different brand, try not to get them mixed up because they may be different sizes, so they might not fit properly. So what I'm going to do here is to take my thread, make sure it's the right way around so my writing is facing the right way up, and pop it onto the spool here. Now some machines have a spool this way, some will have a horizontal spool. So put it on whichever way your machine's designed. Now to wind up the bobbin, on the top of the machine, there's a little thing here that looks a little bit like a screw. I'm going to take my thread, and again there's a diagram on the top here, wind it around that, that's a tension again, and then I'm just going to wind this onto the bobbin. Now there is a little hole in the side of your bobbins, and if you can thread your thread through that little hole, then that's a good idea, but it can be a little bit fiddly, in which case, hold onto the thread and just wind it around that bobbin a few times until it grips. So four or five times until that's gripped. Whoops, that's just come out of the screw. Then we're going to take this back over to where I said we wind the bobbin up and push that on. Then there'll be a bar here that you flick over, whoops, like so. Sometimes the bar comes to the bobbin, sometimes the bobbin goes to the bar. On some machines, you'll also have to pull out the hand wheel slightly. But again, have a look in your instructions in your manual. So now when I put my foot on the foot pedal, the bobbin starts to spin around, and you can see the thread going up and down and up and down as it's filling up the bobbin. So just keep going until the bobbin's full. You can stop if you don't, if you're only going to do a small project. You don't have to fill the whole bobbin up. So I could stop now. Um, some bobbins, when they are full, will automatically stop. Most bobbins will automatically stop. And then I'm going to cut that thread. Pull this back. If you need to pull out that hand wheel, push it back in again now. Then we're going to take the bobbin and we're going to have it with the thread coming off the bottom to the right so it looks like the letter E. And drop this inside here. When it's inside, put your finger on top and you're going to pull the thread towards you and round. And that's going to take it through a little metal groove in the bobbin casing down there, and that affects the tension. So if you don't have the thread going through that groove, and again, they're going to look different on different sewing machines, then too much thread is going to come out of the bottom, and then you'll find lots of uh, thread on top of your fabric. So let's just put the cover back on again. And then we'll take the top thread, and all machines will have a diagram of where you're going to thread it. So just follow one, two, three, etc. So I need to go through that hook, down here. I'm going to go round. Now inside here is a take-up lever, it's called. So if I turn this so that I can see that take-up lever, just about, I can hook it through there. Then we're going to go down and then through the hook that's at the top of the needle. Make sure you don't miss out any of these pieces because these all affect, again, the speed at which the thread comes off the, the spool. We don't want it coming out too quickly. Now at this point, I've got the foot up. There'll be a lever, sometimes it's inside here, sometimes it's at the back, that you can put down and then the presser foot goes down. Now try and pull the thread and it should be quite stiff. That means that the tensions, you remember the two that I said look like a plate, are squished together and they're holding the thread to slow it down through the machine. You need that to happen. And then I'm just going to thread the needle. Some machines will have a needle threader, very basic ones tend not to. So let's push this thread through the needle. So from the front to the back and pull it through. And then we're going to bring the thread from the bottom through to the top. So lift the foot up, 
hold on to the thread and then I'm just going to turn the hand wheel towards me so the needle goes right down and right back up and keep going until that needle is as high as it'll go and then pull and you'll find the bottom thread is pulled up to the top and then we'll take the threads and through the foot and out at the back of the machine and then we're ready to start sewing now always when you start to sew sew a little test piece first of all so with some spare fabric the same fabric that you're going to use to make your project you're going to put this underneath the foot put the foot down choose your stitch so I'm going to stay on a straight stitch and put your foot on the foot pedal and start to sew now this is important when you stop sewing the needle may be down it may be up it may be halfway but your needle needs to be right at the top it needs to be at the highest point before you can take your fabric out so again turn that hand wheel towards you until the needles as high as it'll go then lift the foot up and then pull it out now the reason you need to do that and I'll show you here is because of those tensions now do you remember when we threaded up the machine and I pulled the thread to make sure the tension was engaged when the needle is right up at the top those plates part so if I sew a little bit and I stop there but the needle is still in the fabric so let's lift it up a little way so it's not in the fabric anymore and then try and pull the fabric out it's going to be stiff now that's because the needle isn't at right at the top and the tensions are still close together so if I turn the needle again so it's as high as it'll go the tensions open and that allows you to pull the fabric out the tension dial which affects how much or how tight those little plates are squished together is right on the front of the machine here sometimes it's on the top sometimes it can be a dial sometimes it looks like this try not to touch it the tension will have these little markings on it sometimes they have a number with a box around them and those are what are recommended for most of your sewing projects so you probably never have to touch this but just make sure that it's in the middle of the three boxes if you have one which is normally about number four on your sewing machine so you shouldn't really have to touch that at all now when you start to sew your project put your fabric underneath so this could be sewing a seam now and when we're going to start we're going to put the foot down and then we're going to turn the hand wheel so the needles inside the fabric and then you remember I was saying about the reverse stitch or the reverse button right at the start of the video we're going to press this down and just go backwards a couple of stitches and then carry on sewing forward and you'll sew all along your seam till you get to the end and then when you stop it doesn't matter where the needle is at the moment press this down and go backwards a couple of stitches and then turn the hand wheel again towards you until the needle's high and then take your work out and that'll create like a little knot on each end of the thread so if you don't have that knot these stitches can come undone but when you have that little knot there the reverse stitch that means that the thread isn't going to come undone and where are you and it makes the thread uh, your seam nice and strong there one more thing to mention while we're learning about the machine always practice and one of the things you need to practice I think more than anything is sewing in a straight line it's something that I'm asked so often is how do I sew in a straight line and for the most part it's just practice 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 but there are a few things that can help so on the throat plate or the needle plate of the machine here you should have some markings sometimes the markings go onto the machine and they'll either be in inches or centimeters or in both and they've got numbers on them as well so what you're going to do is to figure out which one of these numbers is the seam allowance that you need the seam allowance is the, is the width between the line of stitches and the edge of your fabric and then pop your fabric underneath so let's go down this way and move it over to the line so I've chosen that line on the metal piece here and then when I'm sewing 
I'm going to guide the fabric against that line. So try and get into the habit of looking where the fabric's going, not where the needle is. It's very tempting to just watch the needle going up and down. You need to watch where the fabric's going in. So guide the fabric again, take it slowly to start with, looking at this point here, not at the needle, and guide it in a straight line. What you'll find with a lot of new sewers as well is that they try and push the fabric underneath. All you need to do is to hold the fabric and guide it. If you don't guide it, the weight of the fabric is going to make it twist. So I'm just holding it flat and I'm guiding it. If you start to push the fabric, you're going to get lumps in the fabric and you're going to have stitches that aren't even. Or if you try and pull the fabric or flatten the fabric, then that can stretch the stitches. You could even bend a needle by doing that. So just keep it flat and guide it. And you can guide it in any direction. You can guide it in a curve, you can guide it in a wavy line. But again, just watch where the fabric's going under the foot, not the needle. Then when you're confident, you can sew really quickly as well. So needle it, it's very highest, pull it out. You may have a little thread snipper on the side. That's like a little blade inside there, and that's what cuts it. But then you get a nice straight line by following the guide. Whoops. Now you can make it a little bit easier for yourself, if you like, by um, putting a little piece of masking tape across the machine at the point where you want to sew. Um, so if I wanted, again, this width of seam allowance, I can put some tape across here where the line is um, so that I can guide the fabric up against that. Or you can put an elastic band around the whole of the bed of the machine if you wanted to, and that may make it a little bit easier. So that's a very brief guide as to how your sewing machine works. And again, not all my sewing machines look the same. They'll have different types of stitches, but they all work, even the most very expensive sewing machines, all work basically in the same way. So don't be afraid of the machine. Um, the worst thing that can happen is that you can break a needle. Don't drop the machine on the floor because you'll break it, obviously. Um, you will break needles. Um, that's going to happen. You'll probably get spare ones with your machine anyway. Do have a look in the manual and have a look through all of the instructions and the pictures so that you're using your machine how it's recommended that your manufacturer um, suggests that you do. And practice. Practice on different types of fabric. But the main thing is, now you've got your sewing machine, you have fun using it. We'll be doing some more videos on different types of stitches, so, um, so watch out for those. I hope you have enjoyed this one, and I hope you enjoy starting sewing. <laughs>